Hello, and welcome to my demonstration of uh, Sakai and IMS Learning Tools and Interoperability. My name is Charles Severance, uh, and this is part of the Sakai project. And we are talking about IMS Learning Tools and Interoperability version 2.0, the very popular IMS LTI 1.1. Uh, as the launch in the gradebook, and this is sort of the next generation of that. And so I'm going to use uh, Sakai to demonstrate this, and um, this is up on our nightly server. It's uh, it's pretty much feature complete at this point. You'll see a little couple of placeholders in the user interface. Um, so I'm going to log in as the administrator. And these nightly servers are rebuilt every four hours, so if you actually want to play with them, uh, you can. So I will go to the administration workspace, and uh, this is here under the external tools option. And uh, the LTI 2 is really sort of a, it, it feeds in and, and articulates with all the LTI 1.1 support that's in Sakai. It's just a new way of installing tools. So we're starting out with absolutely nothing, no tools, no LTI 1. This would be the way that you would add a normal 1.1 tool. We have titles, we have URLs, we have keys, we have secrets, and then each tool we have a bunch of settings. And, and so this is how we would normally do a key URL key and secret based LTI2 tool. On LTI2 deployment, um, and don't worry too much about this uh, sample data. I've got it configured so that when it detects that you haven't configured it in Sakai.properties, it mocks up sample data. Just don't use it because the GUID will be the same. It's fine for testing or for unit testing or whatever, but um, that's why this error message. So I'm going to add a tool. And um, let me call it PHP. And it, it, when we do this tool registration, it can actually register a bunch of tools. And so we're permitting however many tools this external tool provider wants to give us at uh, any given moment. Um, and so I will go to a uh, test harness that I have in the source code. It's a PHP test harness uh, uh, that I have sitting online. If you're running on localhost, you have to have the test harness on localhost because they talk to each other through web services. And if you're online, you can use myonline.drchuck.com, uh, this particular one. So this is creating what's called a deployment. Okay, and it's sending us to registration. I'm going to skip out of this registration. Um, a deployment is a permission to create a set of tools once we involve the tool provider. And so I just popped this out. We have this one deployment, and I'm going to go. This is a placeholder. We'll get that put fixed in a bit. Um, I'm going to go back to registration. So I haven't actually done anything. I haven't talked to the external tool, but I'm about to launch to this URL. So I'm going to start the registration process. I have debugging enabled so that you can see the values that are being sent. Um, these are values that are used uh, to tell the tool where to call me back and register itself and give a key and a secret. Now, this is done as administrator. It should be done with HTTPS. And so really, you know, we're going to send this data through the browser, but it's really from, from the administrator straight to the tool provider. Now, one of the pieces of information that you can play with here and another reason I do this is often you're testing your configuration and your configuration is going to set up what's called the tool provider. And this is a bunch of, uh, oops, where did I go? Go back, go back. There we go. This is a bunch of JSON. And these are all things that you have uh, configuration options inside of Sakai. These offered capabilities and these offered services are driven by all the checkboxes that you ticked. And it's based. It's really communicating uh, using sort of the uh, the LTI2 profile what checkboxes you are willing to offer to this tool. So that is the tool profile. Now normally this debug wouldn't show up, but you just continue and the post happens. That was not a signed request, and so we can debug the post parameters. This blue is the actual tool provider. It's the PHP code. Um, it retrieves that document I just showed you, and then it parses that document and looks for things like the services and the capabilities. And normally this might be a multi-step process where it might ask your identity or credit card or who knows what. But for the unit test, I just sort of fall through and register and send in a registration request. And then um, 
the registration response says we're great and here's your GUID. Uh, the registration request, the secret is sent by the tool. So the tool chooses the secret and the key is chosen by the learning management system. And it could redirect us back to this. This is a URL that uh, LMS gives you. So this is going right back into Sakai and it takes us straight to the activation of this tool. Now you can't go to this activation unless the tool has been registered. Um, the kind of things that you're, this is the moment where you are deciding it hasn't actually been activated. You could stop, throw it all away, say, you know what, I don't like what you're doing here. You get to see the launch URL. You get to see what's called the resource type, which is kind of a MIME type, which is used to uh, reconnect tool instances that maybe be imported from a future common cartridge. And you get to look at the tool profile. And this is basically the services and capabilities and, and some parameters that the tool is requesting. And so, uh, you know, I, I've really extracted the two most critical things out of here. And if this resource type is about to be overwritten, um, it tells you that, it gives you a little red message. So the act of activating is effectively accepting the proposal from the external tool. And now you are going to have all of the data that you need. And so if you look at tools available in system, you will see that what we really did was we installed a tool. We can even look at it. Right, it knows it's an LTI2 tool. There's this resource type, but the key and the secret and the URL, that's managed by the tool. And all these settings were settings that we already put in and there's parameters that it wants and things like that. And you can look at the specification. So it's just effectively created a LTI1 tool. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to log out as the administrator. That was like I just installed a tool in the system. And moments later, I can log in as an uh, end user and I can go into a, a website and I can go into site info and edit tools. And this shows up as a new plugin tool. I'll throw the grade book in and lessons, where's lessons, lessons and grade book, throw those guys in while I'm at it. But it just shows up, right? So we did an install that the, uh, that the external tool participated in. And here I am. So this is that unit test that, that just was installed into my running Sakai. Now, this unit test, this is the again back to the unit test, except it's the tool part of it rather than the registration part of it. And um, Sakai supports the old outcome XML-based outcome services. It sends XML back and forth. Sakai uh, supports the old roster API, the old outcome API, the old settings API, but there are two new URLs. Um, there's the outcome service and the, there's a settings service as well. And so we can get settings at the link level, at the tool proxy level, the, the unit test is there. And so that pretty much gives you the really quick overview of uh, uh, IMS LTI 2.0 in Sakai.